I'm John Kirby here. The Admiral's here to give an update on what's happening in the Middle East and take any foreign policy questions you may have. In the career of any senior Washington spokesperson, nothing turns up the intensity quite like a war. For the man who has been behind the podium in the White House press briefing room through the Gaza war, retired Admiral John Kirby, the global spotlight has been sharp. John Kirby In Washington, the national security spokesman there, John Kirby, said he I take it pers as a personal insult. Mm. Mr. Kirby would just stand there on the podium of the White House and say, meritless, counterproductive, baseless, forget about it. His job in this role is to keep things from escalating. He does a pretty good job of staying on message, but more so, his job is not to further inflame. I am not going to address this issue from this podium. I'm just not going to do it. It's a hard job, especially now, with the way um, communication flows. And the policy positions Kirby has to justify also make the job hard, such as when he called the genocide case brought against Israel at the International Court of Justice. Meritless, counterproductive, and uh, completely without any basis in fact whatsoever. Kirby continued being dismissive of the case during the week of the hearing at The Hague. There's no basis for um, accusations of, of genocide against, against Israel. That's not a word that ought to be thrown around lightly. And we certainly don't believe that it applies here. By the end of the month, the ICJ made its disagreement with that assessment clear, ordering by a margin of 15 judges to two that Israel must, quote, prevent genocidal violence by its armed forces. Israeli forces have killed thousands, hundreds of thousands of people at risk of starvation, um, who are displaced. So by that magnitude alone, one can intuit that there is some form of mass human rights issue here. By dismissing this claim of genocide, it allows Mr. Kirby and other administration officials to sort of then work around confronting and addressing the fact that there is so much mass-scale misery that the United States might be actively complicit in. The Biden administration has three primary messengers putting out the U.S.'s official line on what's happening in Israel's war on Gaza. There are the State Department representatives, the White House press secretary, and John Kirby, whose title is Coordinator for Strategic Communications at the National Security Council but who speaks from the podium at the White House. Kirby and other spokespeople are operating in a media climate where challenges can come not just from journalists in press rooms or news studios, but from the material reporters trapped in Gaza are putting out. Their videos have flooded social media and have even jumped into mainstream news reporting. Tonight, News at 10 has evidence of a group of unarmed Palestinians coming under fire. One of the group was hit and fatally wounded as our cameraman filmed. Carry him. They've killed him, yells this youth. Then suddenly, more gunfire. That ITV report was brought up at a State Department briefing. The spokesman had to claim, in essence, that he couldn't see what everyone else who saw the report could. I have seen the, the, that footage, um, but uh, I uh, am not going to uh, comment on the specifics around that, given I'm not aware of the full circumstances on the ground. Dodging difficult questions, evading evidence that conflicts with U.S. positions, it's part of any spokesperson's job. For Kirby and the others, they are doing that work as approval of the U.S.'s handling of Israel's war on Gaza nosedives. U.S. policy toward Gaza is not overwhelmingly popular in the United States. Polling shows that there's a tremendous number of people who are very ill at ease. CBS News poll is showing most Americans disapprove of President Biden's handling of the Israel-Hamas war. And uh, there are mass demonstrations in the United States. There are about close to 60 members of Congress who've called for a ceasefire. Uh, four U.S. senators have done the same. And so while well, Kirby has tremendous strengths as a communicator, there, I think, is some question about whether his enthusiasm for the administration's position goes over as well, as opposed to one that is a little more nuanced and in touch with the, the real debate that's going on in the United States. 
nuance is not something Washington spokespeople are known for. However, within DC circles, Kirby's lack of it hasn't been of any detriment to his reputation. Two months into the war on Gaza, the Washington Post, the paper considered a must-read in the US Capitol, put out this fawning piece about Kirby. The headline talked up his commanding presence, and yet fewer and fewer Americans are buying the administration's message. By and large, media coverage of Israel-Palestine relations in the United States has been uh, at best mixed and often very poorly done. You see a reflection of administration policy and insider foreign policy consensus rather than a reflection of the real and whole debate. And so it's not overly surprising that you've got folks at the Washington Post saying Kirby's a commanding presence and he's very impressive and, and all these things. But one core question you might ask is, is he effective? The notion that this White House has convinced the American people that its approach to Gaza is the right one, I mean, that's very much up for debate. There are a few things that make a senior spokesperson for any administration successful. One is, of course, just institutional knowledge. Another aspect is just experience. He not only was doing communications and press for the Pentagon, the State Department, the Navy, he as well had a stint on CNN as a security analyst. Joining me now is retired Rear Admiral John Kirby, CNN military analyst. For so he's built up a lot of goodwill both with the press corps and with those who kind of see this man as a respectable voice on these issues. Hamas deliberately shelters themselves inside yes. residential buildings, hospitals, and schools, yes. basically on purpose, putting civilians in the line of fire. And what Israel's trying to do is get them out of the line of fire. So the influence Kirby has with the media has had an impact on mainstream reporting on the Gaza war in the US. Kirby teared up on the air in the days after the Hamas attack on Israel. But I've never seen anything like this. I, uh, it, I'm sorry, it's, it's very, excuse me, very difficult to look at these images, Jake. He hasn't succumbed to such emotion over civilian deaths in Gaza and has even contested the notion that the Israeli army might be targeting Palestinian journalists. Your question presumes that they are deliberately, maliciously going out to kill journalists, and I've seen, we've seen no indication that they have done that. The U.S. will always start at a place where they're pro-Israel. His response was, they have no hard evidence that that is happening. And, and keep in mind, lying is different from just controlling the flow of information, which is very important, especially in a situation like this, where there's a lot at stake, emotions are high, there's a lot happening that on the ground that most civilians are not aware of, at least not its totality. For the four months that the war in Gaza has blazed on, John Kirby has been steadfast at the podium and in new studios. Footage of hospitals under siege have not pushed him off message. Evidence of mass starvation has not altered his talking points. Even the Israeli government's blatant counter-messaging to the U.S.'s statements of diplomacy have not shaken Kirby's line of argument. For some, Kirby's message discipline is admirable. For many others horrified by the brutality in Gaza, the dogged support of Israel's methods of war is unforgivable. Kirby's numerous soundbites have been recorded for posterity, and they will remain for history to judge.